Today is Easter Sunday, a day we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. This makes our communion together a bit different from other Sundays. On the screen, you see the famous painting by Leonardo da Vinci of the Last Supper. What purely fictional in this depiction of the Passover that Jesus and his followers ate, it sets the tone for today's thought. First, let's look at who's sitting at the table, and yes, I know they didn't sit in chairs. Leonardo puts Jesus in the center of the painting, and that's where our eyes focus first. We focus on our Savior. Take a look at his hands. Based on Leonardo's notes, we know who he depicted in the painting. And this is what I like, part of the things I'd like to share with you today. On Jesus' right hand, your left, is John, then Peter, Judas with his head turned to the side, Andrew, James, uh, Jesus' brother, and Bartholomew. On Jesus' left, your right, are Thomas, James, the brother, John, Philip, Matthew, that is and Simon. As you focus your thoughts this morning, think of these 12 men as they did the same supper as you're doing today, this many years ago. Did Peter, as humans are wont to do, think of the fire in the courtyard and what he had said three times? Did he remember the talks as he sat with Jesus? how he listened with awe at his wisdom and grace? Did he cringe when he thought about the times he'd argued with him? What about John? Do you think he remembered how he fled naked from the scene in the garden? Notice that Thomas's hand is pointing up in the painting. Did he rub his hands thinking of the time he placed them and Jesus sighed in that room. I suspect they all remembered the time they had with Jesus. They remembered his messages to them, his words, his teachings, and as time went by, how it all became clear to them, except for one, Judas, who sold him out for 30 pieces of silver. Notice in the painting, he is grasping the money bag. As we think of Jesus and remember his sacrifice this day, think also of what each of us, each of these men gave up to serve a resurrected Savior, not a dead monument. Traditions have that each one of these men, except for Jesus, was martyred for his death. So maybe John, who maybe got to live to an old age. As the apostles sat down with their brothers and sisters for the supper, they remembered his great gift and his sacrifice. As we read the following passage from John chapter 13, study the painting and put yourself there on that night. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who in the world he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to walk, wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. And Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no share with me. 
Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, The one who is bathed does not need to wash, except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. And that was why he said, Not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly. I say to you, as a servant is not a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. I am not speaking all of you. I know whom I have chosen. The scripture will be fulfilled. He who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I am telling you this now, before it takes place, that when it does take place, you may believe that I am he. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever sees the one I receive, sin receives me. And whoever sees me, receives the one who sent me. After saying these things, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified. Truly, truly, I say to you, one will betray me. Disciples looked at one another uncertain of whom he spoke. One of the disciples, whom Jesus was loved, was reclining at the table at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter mentioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So that disciple, leaning back against Jesus, said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is he to whom I will give this morsel of bread when I have dipped it. So when he dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. Then after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, What you are going to do, do quickly. Now no one at the table knew why he said this to them. Some thought that because Jesus had the money bag, Jesus was telling him, Buy what you need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. Then when he had gone out, Jesus said, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. We often say out of Corinthians about what Jesus said about the, the cup and the bread, that we will eat, drink this cup, and eat this bread in remembrance of his death until he comes. Let's pray. Our Father, we are thankful for the communion with Jesus, the saints, for the love you have given to us, as we take this bread, may we proclaim to all the world that his death, until he comes again, that we look forward to the day he comes. We thank you for this precious gift. In Jesus' name, amen. Paul wrote in Corinthians, For I received from the Lord what I delivered to you. The Lord Jesus on that night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body for which... This is for which is for you. Do this remembrance to me. In the same way, he also took the cup after saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Let's give thanks for the cup. Our Father, we are thankful for the cup. For as we drink this cup, we are thinking about his death. We're thinking about his blood that was shed for us. We thank you for the supper. We thank you that we can commune. Even though we're remotely separated today, we can still commune together with you and with all the saints. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you for your time at this communion table. May God bless you.